Hi, I'm just in the car with Godiva and we're about to meet Godiva's new friend called Bertie, who is a standish schnauzer. So come and join me for this week's episode, Celebs with Their Pets. I'm here with renowned broadcaster Andy Kershaw. Hi Andrew. Hi, and you've been broadcasting now since about 81, I understand? Um, well, a bit later than that, 1984 I started on the whistle oh. test on BBC oh. Two, the, um, the flagship rock music programme back then. And uh, unlike most people, I migrated from television to radio and um, and then did both for a lot of seconds, still doing a bit of both. So, yeah, it, go, it, it goes on. And I'm here with Bertie. Bertie. Hello, he's, Bertie. Um, Bertie's just coming up to one year old. Oh. He's a, he's he's a, a lively, isn't yeah. he? Lively, boisterous, I'd say. <laughs> um, and yeah, he's a bit of a handful, but very good natured. He's, he's a standard schnauzer, whereas yours is a mini schnauzer. Mini wow, you're good at nutting as well, aren't you? <laughs> you? You don't see many standards, there, uh, there no, aren't many around. So you've had a, a schnauzer before as well? Yeah, there was, there was Buster before him, who um, I had from 2006 to 2016. An absolutely extraordinary dog. And uh, he's, he's shaping up to be the same. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh. The great key to understanding Buster, Andrew, and probably Bertie as well, is that Buster never knew he was a dog. He hadn't a clue he was a dog. Did you think he was a human? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, for example, if we go into um, uh, a pub and, and, and sit at, at a stool, uh, on a stool at the bar, yeah. we jump up on the stool next to me oh, and, and sit there oh. looking for waiting to be served. I know um, your previous dog, Buster, um, God rest his soul, he, um, he got you through some tough times. Oh, well. certainly did. Yeah. No, I, I find Godiva's the one I talk to if I'm having a discussion with Gary. Yeah. Yes. No, we were absolutely inseparable. The only time that um, he wasn't with me was on those occasions when I had to get on an aeroplane oh, to do a job. Okay. Or if, say, we were filming for television in a <laughs> hospital yeah. or something like that. And on those occasions, I had to find someone to look after him. But otherwise... And he's travelled all over the world. 97 in the world's 194 countries, Andrew. That is so that's amazing. His, that's, no, it's only halfway, isn't it? So, in these countries, you must have seen um, really sad situations regarding animals as well. And some of the yeah, animals. yeah. Do you have any particular stories that you've seen that we've tried? Well, most of the African countries I've been to. That's 27 of them at the last time. You know, there's a... Um, Dogs are just treated appallingly. Yeah, they, they don't have any visible or apparent owners. Yeah, have you been to um, China, South Korea? Oh, China? God, yeah, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. We've just done a podcast on um, the dog meat trade, the dog and cat meat trade. Have you ever seen any of this on the ground? Yeah, in North Korea, yeah. Yes. Uh, there was a, a dog restaurant in Pyongyang. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. um, and, well, the, nothing about the Chinese surprises me at all. It's very sad, you know, like literally stealing dogs from the streets um, in some of these countries, boiling them alive, um, to sell them up, um, in the dog meat trade. And it's just it's horrific, not, yeah. It's not as though well, there aren't any alternatives, is it? It is. Exactly. So, um, Andy, if, um, if you was having a dinner party with all famous animals, who would it be? Who, who can enjoy it? Oh, crikey. Um, I think top of the list would probably be um, Paddington Bear. Oh, I can wonderful. still I can still read Paddington <laughs> Bear to this, to this day. The Mike, Clifford loves Paddington Bear. The Michael Bond book. Yeah. And he, sometimes, he looks <laughs> like it. Oh. He, he looks more of a bear like Paddington than he oh. does a dog. What's your most memorable moment of the pets that you've had over the years? Oh, well. I guess there's several, if, especially if we've been everywhere. We were at a hotel in Coniston at the weekend, and he, he distinguished himself by being a really good lad all weekend uh, for two nights in this hotel in Coniston until he decided to have a poo all over the bed in the hotel room. <laughs> Um, <laughs> on the bed. Yeah, on the bed. And then wiped his bottom on the pillows. And then I had to gently explain to one of the members of staff that this had happened and the police would react to the new bed. So he, he certainly remembered already in Coniston, aren't you? Oh. I mean, losing a dog, it's horrific. It's like losing a family member, isn't it? I, I mean, we've lost a few over the years. A um, lady who is another schnauzer, um, friends of this one, she, she was on chemo for 10 months. Oh. And, and I think they do know when they're going. I mean, she, um, you know, I remember just cuddling up and looking at me and 
as if to say goodbye, you know, before mm. she passed, and it's horrific. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Dave, we're in this special mission room. control. This is mission control. So <laughs> tell me about this room and tell me what you do. Well, here. this is my office, come music library, my CD library. Anyway, um, as you can see, hundreds and uh, hundreds of CDs, floor to ceiling CDs, all beautifully organised. All in different categories of music. And oh, I'll, you do that as well? Oh, sure. Oh, wow, I, I, well, otherwise, you see, if I, if I can't find something straight away, yes, there's no point in having it. Yeah. So then they're in categories of music and then uh, alphabetical by artists within those categories. So you look in there, uh, your eyes have fallen on much of Africa there. Oh, okay. And so there's every African country and then um, <clears throat> alphabetical within those, within those countries in that case. Uh, and it's from here that I do, I suppose. Um, You've got a podcast, haven't you? I'm doing a podcast now, um, because people have been saying to me for years that I should do one. And the thing that people uh, I've decided had missed more than anything else, what people say to me, <coughs> you know, whether it's face-to-face or on Facebook and things like that, is we really miss your, your radio show, your music show. So I thought, well, I'll start doing it again. Um, because the, the technology is now available yes. to do it from here. I managed to do it with these things. And then we have, um, on most of them, we have uh, some uh, guest musician or musicians uh, playing um, in the kitchen downstairs. Oh, so do you yeah. broadcast them live then, do you? Well, well it's not live. Yes. I mean, it's, it's as live. Oh, wonderful. Uh, so yesterday, for example, we had Half Man, Half Biscuit in the kitchen. Um, when you leave, I'll have to start putting together the whole podcast oh, around the the, um, the live half man half biscuit session. So yeah, um, and you know the, the writing gets done here and that kind of thing. Do you broadcast weekly with us? Roughly fortnightly. Okay. I don't want. I was on that treadmill for with, uh, radio, um, both radio one and radio three for. Um, 25 years. It's been 10 such Oh, yeah. uh, doing one program a week, a two hour program, where you choose all the music yourself. Mm. Um, and there's, there was an enormous amount of listening to do to yes. put together that two hour awesome program, which is, I think, one of the reasons why um, it was as good as it was. Because I, I put the hours in listening to all this yes. new stuff, well, new stuff and old stuff, deciding what to play. And to do that program properly, it used to take me five days to put together. Wow. Oh yeah, Amazing. and that was that was like listening uh, from the moment I got up till the moment I went to bed. Uh, five days to put it together, and then perhaps a day going down to broadcasting house and either doing it live or yes. pre-recording it. Uh, and it was like that for twenty-five years. So, um, so, so what? What's your most memorable moment of your career? Then I, I mean, you've, you've, well, you've uh, Live Aid. Live Aid. So Aid. So many. Live Aid, is a, Live Aid has acquired a kind of significance and even a, a mythology. Um, and and um, come here, Bertie, get down. Uh, and it's historical importance um, as the years, it, which has increased as the years have yes, gone by. Yes. When you were there on the day, um, it, you weren't really aware of that. Yes. The, the, you know, I remember the, being young watching it on TV, actually. There were, yes. there were big concerts took place at, at, at Wembley. Um, in fact, Live Aid was the first of quite a flurry of them. There, were, you know, there was one for Nelson Mandela when he was still in jail in South Africa, yes, a kind of free Nelson Mandela concert at Wembley. There was one uh, for him after his release, which, yes. he, which he attended. You know, the, 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 those big concerts were, were kind of routine back then. Mm. But just to put it into, into context for you, you know, now we look upon Live Aid like we look upon Woodstock. Yes, yes. Um, on the day, or even before uh, it, it happened, and the running period from its announcement to it taking place, I think, was only about eight weeks. I remember walking into the whistle test office because I was one of the presenters of the program. Yes. And Trevor Dan, who was the producer of, of the program, um, Geldof had always liked the whistle test and liked the, the, the production team that, that put it together, and in fact, liked us as presenters. Um, he decided that he wanted whistle tests. Um, the, the team to handle the television coverage of this big event he was putting on Live Aid. And I remember walking into the Whistle Test office one Tuesday morning, a programme day, and Trevor looking up from his desk and said, Oh, Andy, when you get yourself sat down, he said, uh, Can you get your diary out? So you, can you keep 
July the 13th, was it? Um, uh, assigned for um, something that you'll be involved in. I said, what's that, Charlie? He said, oh, you know, the Geldof thing, yeah. Ethiopia. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 he's putting on a, a, a benefit concert, uh, there'll be a benefit concert wow. at, at Wembley, and he wants us as whistle test to do the television coverage. So I sat down and I wrote in my diary something like Geldof Ethiopia concert Wembley, July the 13th. And that was that. And then on the day itself, um, the BBC sent a BBC taxi round to collect me and my fellow whistle test presenter, Mark Allen. Yeah. Both of us lived a couple of streets from each, each other in Chiswick in those days. Sent this car around at about eight o'clock in the morning to pick us up and um, to take us up, round to Wembley Stadium. And uh, when we got there, I remember turning to Mark as we stepped out of this taxi, like under the Twin Towers, and all these people streaming in. I turned to Mark and I said, hey, Mark, what's that? It's a bit of a big do, this thing. Oh, yeah. and, and that was it. That is amazing. Um, and then on the day... You just thought, well, you know, big concert at Wembley. I had no idea it was going to be so much part of our yes. uh, our history and our sort of cultural fabric. So back to pets then. Oh, yeah. Um, did you, did that, you have what? dogs growing up? I mean, yeah. I grew up with dogs, cats, everything. Yeah. So, um, and we had bees, we had chickens. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. I've always fancied keeping bees. <laughs> but, but then there are a lot of work, aren't there, I think? What, bees? Yeah. Oh, no, I said geese. Oh, well, geese. No, <laughs> not geese, no. Uh, aggressive buggies. Oh, there was. They chased my mum's car and attacked it. Oh, yeah. and, and they're nasty, <laughs> now. Um, you've only got to... And we've, um, my dad bought a horse from the local Gypsy and Travellers camp, oh, which, yeah. which we had. <laughs> Um, we had like a real menagerie of animals. So, um, what about you growing up? Just a dog. Yeah. From the age of six, um, and then it'd be, it'd be about uh, twenty when I, I'd be about twenty when he died. Um, we had a little black poodle called Sooty. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. And that was I had it. a cat called Sooty actually. Oh yeah. I've so, never so been a cat adult... person. No. no, I'm not a massive cat. Lover, um, I mean, I love all animals, but I just don't think you can beat dogs. No, <laughs> if I was an animal, I'd be a dog, I think. Yeah, well, yeah, because yeah. dogs give. Oh, they do. Cats oh, don't. Look at that. Who's <laughs> you know, a big softy, eh? Is that, is that your new friend? Is that I understand diamond? he goes to bed with you as well. Oh, uh, yeah, she yeah. does with me actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, uh, cats have. I can't see they're the very independent, aren't they? They're just they like to do their own thing, don't they? Yeah, I don't think they give like dogs do. No, so. Finally, um, Andy, um, describe this wonderful dog in three words. My little pal. Oh, that's wonderful, my little pal. Well, lovely to meet you, my little pal. And a real pleasure to meet you, Andy. And you, Andy. And thank you for your time today. Oh, no problem. And you, Godiva. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to come again, Godiva? <laughs> probably not, is the answer to that. I, I would guess probably not. <laughs> You're a daffy bugger, Bertie. <laughs> You're very daffy.